Good afternoon. I now call to order the June 14th, 2021 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Baltimore County Public Schools and offices continue to be closed to the public in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13th, 2020 board meeting in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's policy review committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Live team, excuse me, Microsoft Teams live on BCPS website. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Clark or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Clark, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Yes, Ms. Causey. Present. Thank you. Mr. Mahomsa. Mr. Offerman. Present. And Ms. Scott. Present. You have a quorum, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Clark, please call the role of staff members participating in today's call. Yes, Ms. Burnup. Present. Ms. Ferguson. Present. Ms. Howie. Here. Ms. Lowry. Here. Dr. Nieves. Present. Dr. Scriven. Present. And Dr. Sarchin. Present. Thank you. Are there any staff members on the call that we didn't that we didn't call on? No. Okay. Are there any board members who have joined us that um, we didn't call? Okay, great. Thank you for that, Ms. Clark. So it looks like the first um, item is old business and it's policy 5130 withdrawal from school prior to graduation. And for that, we call on Dr. Zurchin, Dr. Nieves, and Ms. Ferguson. Thank you very much. So I'll begin with an overview of the policy and then turn uh, to Dr. Nieves and Ms. Ferguson for additional information. Uh, policy 5130 outlines the board's expectation that all students graduate from high school and establishes requirements for guidelines to be implemented when a student wishes to terminate their formal education and withdraw from school prior to graduation. Dr. Nieves. Thank you, Dr. Zarchan. Good afternoon, um, board members of the Policy Review Committee. Um, Based on the recommendations from the policy review, the last time staff went back and um, added some clarifying language uh, to the policy, specifically in two areas. One, as it relates to Maryland's compulsory attendance law, and two, uh, greater specificity around uh, the standards of implementation, um, including procedures to address the types of supports and interventions that students would be provided. So in um, section one, as it comes to, uh, as it relates to the Maryland's compulsory attendance law, we added language saying Maryland's compulsory attendance law requires students to attend school until they reach age 18. And so that's the new language that we added. 
And then in uh, section 2B, uh, we outlined procedures. We added new language outlining the procedures uh, for students, uh, which would not be limited to the following three areas providing the student with tiered interventions and supports to address the student's individual needs. Number two, encouraging the student to remain enrolled in school or to participate in other educational options programs. And uh, C, conducting the educational exit interview as required by state uh, regulation. And with that, Ms. Ferguson and I are available to answer any questions. This is Mr. Offerman. Uh, I would like to ask a question, uh, and it may not be part of the policy, but I, I'm assuming it's still a thing that concerns me. If we get a student who is in high school and is a senior, okay, but does not, but not successful, and even with summer school, is not able to secure enough credits in order to graduate. Uh, what is the po what is the policy or the rule that will uh, that will uh, 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 that will uh, that will dictate what 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 options he or she has to finish up. Ms. Ferguson. Good afternoon. So once again, going back to the language that was added into the policy, um, we would be looking at that senior individually to determine what supports he or she needed to um, earn the remaining credits and how they would be able to earn those credits, whether that would be through um, traditional school options or through some other type of educational option. Um, all of those would be um, offered to the student in, in, a, in consultation with the school counselor and the student's parent. And in many cases, well, thank you, Ms. Uh, Ferguson, and in many cases we also uh, team and collaborate with educational options, looking at what uh, opportunities are available through those means uh, for students to uh, make up any coursework. Uh, uh, just expand on that for a second. Uh, if a student was, as I said, was was not successful and, and couldn't complete the credit needed, would he or she have an option to do a, uh, a fifth year of high school? Yes, students are able to go to school until age 21. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from committee members? Good afternoon. No other Madam questions? Chair. This is good afternoon, Madam Chair. This is Ms. Causey. I do have a question. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I did have a question for staff related to um, our students. In the policy draft, it does not mention contacting parents or uh, guardians or family. Um, and I note that there is um, a distinction between a minor, a student who is 18, who is under 18, uh, you know, in the role that their parents have with them as a minor and with them older. So I wondered, is that already included in the tiered interventions? And is that um, specifically in the superintendent's rule? So that is specifically in superintendent's rule. Uh, the a meeting must be called um, with a student or parent or guardian. Uh, and again, as you mentioned, that depends uh, in, in each circumstance on the age of the student. Thank you for that clarification. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from committee members? No more. OK, hearing no questions. Um, if there are no corrections, then um, policy is moved forward as for first reading as presented. Um, so if Ms. Um, could do a roll. I'm sorry. This is Mr. Offerman, do we have to vote? Yes, that's what I was saying. If we could do a roll call vote. Oh, OK. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Ms. Clark, if we could do a roll call vote on policy 5130 moving forward for first reading. Yes. 
Yes, ma'am. Ms. Causey? Yes. Mr. Mahomes? Up? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. And Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so policy 5130 um, uh, is moved on to first reading and the motion carries. Next is policy 4104, technology acceptable use policy, TAUP for authorized users. And um, presenting, we have Ms. Howie, Ms. Lowry and presenters, if you could please state your name for the minutes. Sure, um, members of the committee, it's Margaret Ann Howie, uh, general counsel. Uh, I would ask prior to my presenting whether or not um, Dr. Zarchin, Dr. Nieves, and Ms. Ferguson can please be excused. Yes, they may. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Thank members you. Of, members of the board, uh, members of the committee, Ms. Uh, Lowry and I, um, with support of Dr. Scriven, uh, are here to present uh, board policy 4104 TAUP to the committee again. And Mr. Uh, Corns, just so you know, there is a question in the chat for you from Ms. Causey. Um, members of the committee, to refresh your recollection, um, in a January 28th, 2021 letter to the board chair, uh, the um, Office of the Inspector General for Education uh, did recommend that the board uh, establish some sort of standards for employees and for board members concerning the use of social media. Uh, this policy 4104 was presented first to you uh, at your April 28, 2021 meeting. Uh, at that meeting, the committee voted to hold this policy, policy 4104, and to discuss it in conjunction with policy 8601. There were no particular uh, requests beyond discussing the policies together. As you will recall, policy 8601, which is next in your lineup, uh, is use of social media by Board of Education members. Uh, so those are presented to you for discussion. Uh, Ms. Lowry, Dr. Scriven, Ms. Burnop, and I are available to answer questions. Thank you very much for that, Ms. Howie. Um, and I just, uh, I wanted to have these two policies come together so that they could be both reviewed and approved or changes made um, at the same time since they both are a result of, of the letter that was um, received from the Office of the Inspector General. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to the committee um, for any questions. So I'm looking in the chat. Are there any committee members that have any questions or additions or revisions to policy 4104? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Okay, yes, Ms. Causey. Good afternoon, and um, thank you for that presentation. In uh, an, the earlier meeting, it was um, question in the board meeting about this social media, <clears throat> excuse me, references to social media uh, are indicating that it is an official uh, Baltimore County Public Schools um, medium. Is that correct? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm can, was that for Ms. Howie or? Yes, that question? was for Ms. Howie. I'm sorry, I was muted. I do apologize. So uh, what I would refer you to, um, Ms. Causey, is the policy which indicates that uh, this does govern use of BCPS social media as well as uh, uh, personal social media accounts. Thank you. So is that on page one, paragraph B? Is that... Um, what you're referencing? What I'm referencing is standards uh, subsection D. And it, does, <clears throat> it is not limited to social media accounts that are BCPS issued. 
Okay, and okay, so I see in paragraph about one B, the board mm -hmm. supports the use of online platforms as well as other media such as blogs and personal websites to promote the educational mission of BCPS. Use of social media should adhere to standards of conduct and decorum as well as the standards outlined in this policy. Um, right. Is that and and then what you're an additional statement in paragraph D on page two, the board supports the use of online platforms as well as other media such as blogs and school system websites to promote the educational mission of the public schools within the board's jurisdiction. The superintendent shall establish guidelines for the acceptable uses of social media by employees consistent with federal and state laws. So um, was that language that was added after the prior committee meeting? No, this was in the prior draft. OK, and is that consistent with other government agencies in the state of Maryland? Yes, ma'am. And in the um, implementation of this policy, uh, how is it um, determined if an employee is abiding by the policy? That is on a case by case basis, ma'am. So it would certainly have to be fact specific. It seems rather broad um, to include employees' personal accounts. Certainly, we want our employees to be uh, have decorum um, in their conduct. And if they're not speaking on matters of public concern or matters that have anything to do with public education, then certainly uh, they would have the First Amendment right to speak out. Uh, but again, there are fact specific uh, uh, situations where employees who are communicating as such and representing themselves themselves as such on their personal accounts or what would otherwise be a personal account, it is possible that those individuals, notwithstanding First Amendment rights, can be sanctioned for the use of social media and for what is being communicated. Thank you for that expl explanation. Um, in, as I recall in other policies, there is specific language about um, conduct, um, specific um, consequences, um, and I guess this this just seems broad to me in terms of how um, how it applies to personal accounts. Certainly anything that goes through uh, board technology or uh, board uh, social media accounts um, would require more stringent review and use. Um, it just seems broad, very broad. What do you say broad, ma'am? What do you mean? I'm not sure I understand the use of the term. In terms of applying to employees, um, or it, this this policy also references board members uh, and approved non-employees. <clears throat> um, In terms of the board member social media policy, that would be 8601, and the committee had asked that those two be reviewed together. Uh, so employee rights, uh, I, I know you use the word broad, perhaps it's more accurate to say that uh, the, uh, the policy uh, understands and acknowledges the fact that board that uh, employees, excuse me, have First Amendment rights, but those First Amendment rights can be circumscribed and still and individuals can still be sanctioned without going into the specifics because indeed it's not specific. So that may be uh, another way of calling it broad. 
but the state, the rights of public employers are not necessarily broad. Thank you for that explanation. I, I have uh, concerns about it, but I will um, just wait and hear from other board members. Are there any other members of the committee that would like to um, ask any questions or um, have any um, discussion or revisions to policy 4104? No? Okay. All right. And if there are no corrections or additions or revisions, then um, we can take a vote on moving policy 4104 to first reader. So, um, Ms. Um, Clark, if you could take a roll call vote, please. Yes, um, Ms. Causey? No. Mr. Mahomza? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. In favor, so the motion carries. And policy 4104 will move forward for first reading. Um, next is policy 81, excuse me, 8601, use of social media. And presenting is Ms. Howie. Thank you, members of the committee. Uh, prior to presenting, I would ask that Ms. Burnup, uh, Ms. Lowry, and Dr. Scriven be excused. Yes, and thank you all very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank so, you, so members of the committee, uh, again, this policy's genesis was in the January 28, 2021 letter from the Office of the Inspector General. Uh, this policy was discussed at your February 22nd meeting, approved and sent to the full board. Uh, on March 8th, there were additional comments provided by board council. Those were incorporated into um, the policy. You also have uh, members of the committee. We presented to you the public comment uh, that was uh, given at the March 23rd, 2021 board meeting. As well, during your uh, during first reader on March 23rd, 2021, uh, the committee returned uh, this policy to PRC to address certain concerns raised by board members and the public. There was no uh, additional direction given to the um, the policy review committee. Therefore, 8601 is being returned for discussion by the committee. Thank you for that, Ms. Howie. And looks like we have a question from Mr. Offerman. Yes. Uh, on page two, section three, lines 18 through 30, it directs, if I'm, if I, if I recall, or uh, it, it addresses issues of uh, of uh, inappropriate use by uh, by uh, board members. And I think what came up at the uh, at the meeting in uh, in uh, in February, the question is who who would decide that or how would that be decided? And what, while I don't expect it to be part of the policy, I, I would assume it'd be part of some kind of rule. Am I correct about that? So uh, there's only one rule in the 8000 series, uh, mm -hmm. and that's a superintendent's rule. But this is a board policy directing or uh, governing board conduct. What staff have done, um, members of the committee, is to um, further give you further information from um, policies that have been enacted by other local school systems. So I, I would direct your attention to um, the policy analysis. So if you look at um, similar policies adopted by other local school systems, what you find in those other policies uh, what we summarized for you is we've provided to you those elements which we think would be helpful in your decision making. We also provided to you um, some, uh, and that's on page six, guidance from the State Board of Education, uh, specifically two cases uh, concerning removal of local board members 
uh, and how social media played a part in that in those removal requests. This is and this policy basically is about the board governing itself. The superintendent would not have any um, any authority to decide or to recommend any action uh, about a board member's conduct. As you see from uh, the policies adopted from other local school systems and these two cases, as well as cases cited in um, the next policy we're going to discuss, what the state board looks to is the local board for the local board to make a recommendation to the state board concerning any sort of removal and in the censure cases that have been cited in um, the other policies that are going to be discussed today it's the local board that decides whether or not to censure another local board member as happened in Howard County and Prince George's County and I believe was in um, Wicomico County, it was in one of the, Dorchester, excuse me, one of the other shore counties. So it's not that there necessarily would be a rule uh, unless the board wants something more specific about how exactly this authority would be exercised. What the policy goes into, however, is that there is authority to be exercised. And I hope that answers your question, Mr. Offerman. Uh I guess the only concern I still have is that I'm, I'm I'm just trying to put this in terms of practicality in case this in case this would in fact come up would it would it, would it would take a, a would it be handled by a, a motion on the board to censure or remove someone uh, and then and then uh, sort of a, a majority approval or I mean I, I'm just I'm I'm trying to put this into at least in my own mind into how this would actually work if if in fact we would have to if we had, if we would have in fact have to uh, have to uh, deal with it. The board would have to take action. And when when I say the board, that means there you need a majority of the board to take action. Yes. Thank you. That's, You're that, that, that really helps me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. It sounds like what it is is um, as I've read it and, and I'm thank you for putting um, all of this. This is good in the analysis. The um, other boards of education and the cases as it relates to social media specifically um, so that it, we could have a frame of reference. Now, my thing is, is that it looks like this policy is um, based on what Mr. Offerman was saying and what you explained is this is a, a self-governing policy really so that if it would take someone I guess from the board to notice that someone is in violation of policy 8601 and then it would be brought up to the board and then I guess under um, what we have up here it would be first asked that they stop and then it would go into the um, I'm looking at the policy and it looks like it's under at the end uh, a request to cease the objectionable activity and if it continued removal from any committee assignments and then censure by the board and so it sounded like what you're saying is is that those things would have to be handled by the board so we would be self-governing the board would or i guess the chair would make a request for the person to stop and then it would have to come to a vote for them to be removed from the committee or assignments and then it would come to a vote for the censure by the board is that a, a correct a correct um depiction of how that would happen this is action by the board yes ma'am it's it's not action by a single member of the board and again if you look at the harshman case uh or the cases out of queen anne's county actually mm -hmm. i think the case out of queen anne's county is very helpful because there the board took action and the state board overturned indicating there were not sufficient facts upon which to base a censure so you sort of have there a template of what the state board would be looking for with censure as well in the Prince George's County case uh, that cited later, although it had nothing to do with social media. It was simply a board member conducting an investigation himself as opposed to allowing it to happen uh, through administration. Uh, so again, in terms of the board um, governing itself, that is a decision of the board. It's not a decision of any one individual. Okay. And that's what these cases make clear. Okay, that's important. It's it's the board, it's self-governing and we govern ourselves and our behavior. It's not just one person. Okay. 
Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Offerman, for bringing that up. Those are some very um, important points. Did that help with a little bit with the clarification? <laughs> it helped me. Yes, it did. Um, okay. I'm, I'm fine with that now. Thank you. Thank you. It's good discussion. Um, does anybody else have any questions or discussion? Ms. Causey? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that discussion. Um, so <clears throat> in looking through um, board docs, um, I did not see the comments um, that previously were compiled um, by PRC staff related to board, me board member comments and also um, the public comments. Or did I just miss those on board docs or they're, they're not attached to board docs? Those are provided to uh, the committee via SharePoint. We placed all the comments in a SharePoint site and sent that link to you last week. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, but so it's it's not available through board docs, so it's not um, accessible by the public? As to what was compiled by staff, uh, the documents that were compiled by staff are available through a SharePoint site to members of the committee. Uh, as to what is in the transcript or certainly in the minutes of the past board meetings, those are available to the public. Okay, and for other board members that want to, <clears throat> that wanted to access that SharePoint site, do they need to be, do they need to request that from you or uh, chair of the committee, Ms. Scott? We can provide access to whichever board member so desires. OK, thank you. Um, <clears throat> is that something that staff can um, explain to all the board members in an email so that they'll they'll be aware that that opportunity is available? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Then as to um, page one under item two standards, a, it says when posting items on social media, a board member must clarify that the board member is speaking as an individual and not as an official board spokesperson. Only the board chair has been delegated the authority to speak on behalf of the board. Uh, so it doesn't indicate whether it's a personal account or a uh, board sanctioned or BCPS uh, sanctioned um, account. Um, so is there any difference that should be articulated related to that? If that's what the board so desires. OK, and um, also on certain social media sites, there's general uh, about information um, where uh, people speak to what that uh, social media account is about. So would it be considered covered if it's in that about? Um, certainly wouldn't have to be in every post. Is Would that be your understanding or does that need to be clarified? I'm not sure I understand your underlying uh, supposition. So there's a statement that says, must clarify that the board member is speaking as an individual and not as an official board spokesperson. Uh, mm -hmm. So for instance, if a board member has a social media account that says uh, Jane Smith board member, Mm -hmm. um, and in their about uh, page, it says, uh, this is my personal account. I'm not speaking on behalf of the board. Uh, I'm you know, engaging with community. Um, <clears throat> would that cover or would, would it mean that every post would have to say, I'm speaking as an individual? So without seeing the specific posts, it seems to me that again, um, if the board member has made the statement in some way, shape or form in a way that is accessible, then that would satisfy this part of the policy. As well, Ms. Causey, uh, given that this is the board's policy for the board's conduct, then it seems to me that if there is any sort of conduct that's presented to the board as possibly um, being a violation of the policy, that the board as well would say, well, 
this statement was in this description of the uh, the account. So this would be sufficient. That's that part of that would be part of the board's analysis of the policy. Thank you for that um, explanation. Uh, the other question I have related to this policy is on page two. Um, paragraph E, uh, it says board members should always conduct themselves online in a manner that reflects well of the board and the school system and shall avoid posting information that has not been verified and made public by the board or the school system. Um, and I had asked a question about this, I believe, in a prior meeting um, that there are numerous times uh, when board members um, may post uh, reports by the Maryland State Department of Education, may post news articles related to education, may post um, um, paragraphs by National School Board Association or uh, post um, uh, publications by the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. So I think that that um, statement is not, um, that that statement should be changed. I, I don't think that that's um, realistic or, or really um, desi desirable. Um, if I could speak to that, uh, if I could ask a question of that, Ms. Causey, those sure. items that you just named, like a NEA or a, a press release or a newspaper article, those are already public. Those are already public outside entities and, and public outside statements or stories or what have you. So that really doesn't apply to E if they're reposting a public story that's already public. Um, what this is talking about are school system issues that have not been made public that are made public through a member social media site or or, or web page or, or what have you. The, that sounds like that would be, uh, I guess, maybe self-explanatory a little bit. Like if it's already a public news story and someone just reposts something that's already public, that's already circulating, that's not creating and making it public. It's already public. So, oh, um, did you have another question, Ms. Causey? Or it looks like Josh Mahomes has a question. Um, yes, I, I did have another question, but I also would like to hear from um, uh, Ms. Howie. In regarding my question. Oh, OK, I thought I answered your question. Um, Ms. Howie, do you have a, an additional response to Ms. Um, Causey? Ms. Scott, it looks like um, she must have been dropped from the call if you want to wait for her to call back in. Oh, oh goodness. OK. <laughs> wait for her to call back in. Is she back in yet? I don't see her and it looked like we lost Mr. Corns too. So um, let oh, me check. OK.
It's Martin and Howie. I'm sorry. Um, something's going on with the internet at Greenwood, so I'm calling in. Oh, uh, Miss Howie, I, I'm I'm running down. Um, uh, it it looks as though there's. Um, I, I don't want to speak until I find out exactly what it is, but uh, it looks as though um, uh, anyone that was on a BCBS property at the moment uh, does not have uh, access to the internet. I've joined through my um, hotspot. Okay. Uh, um, so unfortunately, I'm sorry, ma'am, go ahead. I'm sorry, did we lose anyone else other than you two? Is um, Clark with us or? Tracy uh, um, dropped off as well. Ms. Clark is still with us. I'm still here. I was at, I'm here. Yeah. Um, okay. So the only problem is Scott is because of the limited, uh, the limited bandwidth that I've got on my phone, the, I can't stream this out. So are we no longer live? Um, Ma'am, I can't I can't confirm uh, that it says that we are uh, that our event will uh, continue in a minute, but I don't know why it's paused. So I'm trying to check, but I'm, I'm in a, a little bit of a limited function at the moment. Um, so get, oh, if you can give me one sec. Thank you, Mr. Corns, because if we're no longer streaming, um, we're no longer a public meeting, so we're no longer compliant with the Open Meetings Act. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Let me check one second, okay? Thank you, sir. I apologize, board members. Hmm, wow. So then we, if we can't get back up, then we would just drop off and continue the rest of the meeting, I guess, at another time. I just got a text from Tracy. She said it still looks as if the meeting is live. So if you want to continue. Yeah, uh, yes, for as long as we can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is, um, are you still with us, Ms. Causey? It looks like we are live. Tracy just confirmed. Yes, Scott, I Ms. am Ms. here. Scott, mine oh. still says it's live. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear, say again. I'm still showing the meetings live on my end too, Miss Scott. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so then as long as the meeting is still streaming and we're still live, then um, we'll continue as, as as long as we can. Um, so where we left off, um, Miss Causey had asked a question and I don't believe you heard it, Miss Howie. Um, I'm sorry, I did not. Okay. Ms. Causey, would you mind repeating your question? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. On policy 8601, page 2, uh, line 12, paragraph E, it says board members should always conduct themselves online in a manner that reflects well of the board and the school system and shall avoid posting information that has not been verified and made public by the board or the school system. And I believe that last um, phrase should be um, better defined because um, I know that there are, are board members that post uh, reports from the Maryland State Department of Education, agendas from the state board, news articles, uh, National School Board Association documents, um, Maryland Association Board of Education uh, documents or links and things of that nature. So I think um, that that sentence needs to be uh, corrected, and I would uh, appreciate your input on that. What do you propose, ma'am? I, I think it would be preferable if staff proposed a change um, that, you know, would be in keeping with the grammar and the... And if I can ask, because I, I didn't know if you heard, because I had also asked a, a question, um, to uh, piggyback off of what um, um, Miss um, uh, Causey had stated, I said that I thought that public um, that this didn't apply to like public articles, like news articles. If NEA has something, or if there's a a, a, a paper and a, and a member repost an already public article or already public um, story onto their site or, or, or onto their or their, their web page or onto their Twitter account 
that that wasn't applicable here because this in the way I understood it was that it's school system information that's not public, not already public information. Um, was that the spirit in which it was written or did I misunderstand that? No, that's correct. It would have been it would have been it was intended that there not be privileged information or information that's not been verified uh, that is published. OK, so then maybe that could be put in there. Um, privileged information. Posting um, instead of it says shall avoid posting information, maybe perhaps it should say shall avoid posting privileged information that has not been verified. Maybe it's simple to add that one word to it. That would be my suggestion. Oh, it look, I'm sorry uh, in all that. Um, Mr. Mahomes had a question. Um, sorry, Mr. Mahomes, are you still there? I'm nope. still here, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, my question, um, I don't know if there was, was there a motion right now from this discussion? Hello? Yes, you, we heard some feedback. Could you repeat what you said? I said, was there a motion right now? Um, were you proposing? I had um, made a suggestion. I didn't make a motion because I, I think it's actually fine as it is. I just made a suggestion, um, but I wanted to hear um, what you had to say first. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to go off this discussion if there's a motion, but my question was a bit different. Um, I wanted to know um, what types of repercussions um, would the board face from the inspector general if um, this policy is in, in place? Is, would, there, would the board face any consequences? I don't think that the inspector general, and I believe I'm uh, back online now, so thank you for your forbearance, members of the committee. Uh, I do not believe that the inspector general noted in his letter that there were any specific consequences. I believe uh, his request was simply born out of the complaints as indicated in the letter that he received about board member use and employee use of social media, but he did not indicate that there would be a specific um, consequence. Yeah, um, and I, I, I try to keep up um, on social media with what the public has what is saying about the school system and some of their concerns and uh, I believe the individuals and I don't want to name names, um, but the individuals who are uh, uh, saying that um, they didn't have access to uh, board members' accounts or they felt like their speech was being limited or what they felt board members were saying um, was inappropriate. I was just curious, um, did the Inspector General state any laws or rules uh, were, that he feared were being violated and that's why he called for this or he just simply said um, um, it's best in, in the boards um, to protect the board from any future um, lawsuits or anything to do this policy? The Inspector General did not mention any specific laws or rules. Uh, and members of the committee, I'll be uh, typing in uh, the language that you want to discuss. Uh, I, I visual, so I'm hoping that this will help you discuss a better way to um, amend the um, the language. Okay. I believe though the Inspector General to answer Josh's question though, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Howie, he did cite some cases, I believe, in one of the letters in regards to um, social media usage or misusage. I believe he indicated that there were um, other government agencies that had policies, but his letter is a part of the analysis. Okay, okay. great. Uh, okay, and um, I guess my final question, going off um, um, what I was saying uh, right now, um, does the state board, um, I don't know if it's the state board or the, um, um, the agency, uh, I think it might be the ethics panel. I'm not specifically sure which agency would oversee this, but um, would th could they possibly intervene if the board doesn't come up with some type of policy? Do you, are there any laws or rules or even any ethics um, language that states that if 
board members or, or even the board in general has no policy of decorum uh, when it regards um, releasing information to the public or interacting with the public, can they possibly intervene if we take no action? So uh, let me give you a definitive maybe, uh, Mr. Mahamza. And again, that's based on the uh, the cases that were cited in the uh, in the policy analysis. In those um, cases, what you see uh, specifically, let's look at the Harshman case. There were no specific policies that said this is how um, you use uh, information. Uh, what the board as an entity decided was that Mr. Harshman's conduct was inappropriate. So, or Ms. Harshman's conduct was inappropriate. So, um, given that there were no, there was not a policy, but the board decided nonetheless that the conduct um, in posting on social media that there were child abusers who were being protected by the superintendent and then not having, uh, not reporting uh, further, uh, but clearly uh, inciting the community. There wasn't a policy that said thou shalt not post these sorts of things on social media. It was up to the board to decide that this was inappropriate conduct. Similarly, in Queen Anne's County, uh, when members of the community uh, wanted board members removed or censured, there wasn't a policy they were violating. It was what the members of the community believed to be violative of standards, even though uh, what ultimately happened was that the state board didn't agree. So is it possible that another entity could find that there were, um, that there should have been action taken? It's possible. Uh, is it possible that the, the state board could accept a case about censure? It's possible. Uh, that that is a possibility again based on the cases that were provided to you. Thank you. So yeah. members of the committee, I'm sorry, Mr. Mahamza, I interrupted yeah, you. No, no, no I, I don't have any more questions, but I just wanted to make a comment. Um, like Ms. Howie has said uh, over and over, I think um, this is a decision the board um, uh, I personally think needs to make, but it is uh, the board's decision. I, and I think over the past couple of months, even year, the board has had a bad repute of the community. And I think in order to repair those, um, that mistrust and bring back the reputation of the board, I think it's imperative that we make and we both improve this um, uh, policy. I th um, I'm not going to be on the board in the next couple of, in the next couple of years, but I just think um, the work we do here is important. What we've done this year is important, but all of that has been overshadowed by conduct on social media. And I just think us as professionals need to do more to repair damages in the community. And I, I just hope it can uh, approve a favorable policy. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Very important. Yes, Ms. Howard, please continue. So members of the committee, uh, based on just a brief discussion, I have um, I've shared my screen. Um, and Ms. Causey, uh, your concern, Ms. Um, Ms. Scott, your suggestion. So Ms. Causey, is this getting closer to um, addressing your concern by including privilege before information? Ms. Howie, can I ask you to share your screen again? It did not uh, show up. Okay. Yeah, I still see a blue screen. Okay. You see it now. No, ma'am, hang on. Ms. Howie, try, try one more time for me. Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Korn. So the only change is just privileged in red? Uh, for the moment, but this is open to your discussion. Okay. Yes, Ms. Calsey, you had a just, um, question or statement? Uh, first, I want to thank Ms. Howie for making um, that in, that in suggestion and sharing that <clears throat> screen with us. 
Um, I think that that is helpful, but um, maybe still not uh, specific enough. I um, want to dovetail with another member's comments about it is important that the board's conduct is um, held to a high standard. Um, and that uh, the community um, understands what those standards are and that there are um, uh, steps that are taken uh, when it seems that a board member may not be um, acting within, within the uh, parameters that the board has agreed to. Um, I would like to see uh, a separate policy that uh, is specific regarding the board evaluation of board member conduct um, and uh, the process um, that is involved in that. Um, we're speaking about uh, some very serious issues um, related to the consequences. Um, we have board members that are um, elected by their communities. We have board members that are appointed by a nominating commission made up of stakeholders and community members from around the county um, and to consider um, limiting their ability to do the work of the board um, and then to consider removal from committee assignments and even censured by the board or removal from the board I think needs to be a well thought out uh, and um, policy in and of itself um, or even a process so I'm I am concerned about moving this policy forward without that clarity. Um, but I so I'll just make that statement. The the other uh, questions I had um, is it does not include any statement about board members First Amendment rights. Um, there's not any distinction from campaign accounts of board members, um, which, I, um, you know, is a separate process and activity um, and it's also one that's going to be starting up soon as um, the next election cycle is um, is gearing up um, and also um, I, I have a question specifically there was a suggestion in an email from uh, the chief of internal audit about um, this de policy development specifically and in reviewing the Baltimore County Police Department um, social media policy and I wondered if that had been considered because I do appreciate the, the policy analysis um, but I would also like to understand that because Maryland has its own Open Meetings Act laws uh, it has its own um, guidance from the state regarding boards of education um, and so I thought that, that might be helpful so is that something that was considered or could be considered it was not considered, ma'am. If that's something that the committee so desires, uh, the staff takes direction from the committee. OK, thank you. I think it would be helpful for the full board to receive the um, policy analysis as well as access to the SharePoint um, documents so that at the next board member, if if the committee feels like it's ready to move forward, which I do not, but if it does move forward, I think that would be helpful in the next meeting to have board members prepared to uh, process it more efficiently. So the analysis is available to the full board. Yes, ma'am. And this revised analysis with the new format, with the additional information, all of that is available to all board members. Yes, I, I'm speaking specifically about the documents that are included on SharePoint, which uh, included board member comments and also stakeholder comments about uh, policy drafts. So if I may, um, just for clarification, um, this is a committee, not the full board. And so what we are supposed to do is decide and discuss this in committee and then bring our recommendations to the full board, not hold policy court with the full assembly. That's why we have committees to do the heavy lifting, to do the work. Um, it sounds like you're trying to move the decision of this policy to review and to have amendments and things made by the full board when that's our work here in this committee and, and why we're here. Also, this policy 8601 is very specific. It was written to be specific 
because of complaints and because it uh, was a direction directly from the office of the inspector of um, the office of the inspector general and the examples that were used are not just out of the air these are examples that other school systems have used that other organizations have used which are no different than us so i think throwing in another policy and then the kitchen sink and everything else waters it down and takes away from what we are attempting to accomplish here we must govern ourselves we must be able to write policy that governs ourselves we must acknowledge when there have been complaints when there have been problems and we must come up with a way to resolve it and not go down a rabbit hole and have endless debate because this can continue and go on forever and um, then we accomplish nothing so we must show that we are able to come up with a cohesive very clear policy that addresses a very specific issue it's not a catch-all it's very specific um mr mahomza you have a follow-up yes um and i appreciate those words madam chair um I, I think if based on what board members start off their sentences with that we care about the community and we want to improve our relations with them um it's true i think then we should be not only i don't want to say passing this policy because i support this policy but at least contribute to, contributing to it but like what i've heard from the board member who was speaking previously before the chair was uh, saying that maybe something should be changed or more follow-up to it but then we have a whole group of staff members here we have the committee live right now and not contributing to the conversation and keeping comments very vague. I, I, I don't think that's earnest at all. I think if there's fear about how a policy would uh, impact a certain action or language of the policy, then we should be contributing to it, not being vague, not making statements and not following up with those statements. I think more, more than anything, I think that's more of a filibuster than actually doing the work of the community committee. And so I just, I, I'm just gonna move the previous question because I don't think we're going to go anywhere with this. OK, so the, um, the question has been moved. Is there a second? I don't believe there was um, a motion on the floor. Oh, OK, okay. there was not a motion. Then I, okay. then I make the motion. Sorry. Second, Offerman. OK, sorry. You, uh, so Mr. Mahomes made a motion to vote on the policy as it stands. Yes. OK, and it was seconded by Offerman without the changes. OK, um, and it looks like there is a comment on, uh, excuse me, a comment from Ms. Causey on Mr. Mahomes's motion. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so I wanted to make the comment that the board in a previous meeting evaluated the work of the Policy Review Committee and uh, found that additional work was needed and I think that um, given that board members um, were not uh, privy to the information that was on the SharePoint drive, and I'm seeing some of the concerns that I recalled um, <clears throat> not being addressed, that I think that um, when this comes in front of the full board, that there may be uh, work that other members want to be done and I think I'm trying to uh, prepare uh, for that to be an efficient process. Um, so while yes, work should be done in the committee uh, that the full board can evaluate and be confident in, if um, we're asked to redo work, but we don't complete that work, it's, uh, it, it, it's reasonable that board members will ask for additional work. And I think that it would be, uh, I'm just asking staff and if, uh, the chair of the committee feels like facilitating my suggestions, then that's a possibility. And if not, then, um, you know, board members in the full board can address this policy as they may. 
and which they can and as and I will uh, remind all board members are welcome to attend any committee meetings um, to address the policy here with us and to speak. That's something that is still available to full board members so that we don't have to take up the assembly's time um, debating committee um, issues or things that should be handled in committee. So you're right. The uh, board members can attend. Those who have comments may attend. Um, none have. We're here and we're doing the work. Um, Mr. Mahunza, you have a comment on your motion? Yes, again, um, saying that more work uh, needs to be done and um, the policy needs to be looked over, I don't think it's earnest at all. Um, we've been, we had a whole, we have an open um, policy review committee meeting right now. Um, we had weeks to prepare, uh, board members had more than ample time to submit their questions, questions submit feedback. Um, and they didn't. Now we're saying it needs to be done. It needs to be looked over. We need more meetings, more hours. It's been, I don't know how many months since this policy has been proposed, but it's been a couple months. Um, this is more like a teacher giving students assignment, an assignment and leaving the paper of directions blank. Like what, what more work should we do? What language should we fix? Um, even staff has said, what would you like to change? And no um, change has been proposed. I just think it's wasting the time of the committee and the time of board members. Um, and this is not saying that board, we're shutting down any opportunity for board members to have an opportunity. Like I've said, board members have had weeks to present their questions, submit any um, changes, and nothing has happened. And again, I'm, I'm anticipating like how the vote took place last, uh, last time this was brought to the full board. It's probably going to be brought back again. And we're gonna have the same sort of cycle and I don't think it's helping the community or even helping the board. So um, I hope we can pass my motion and I hope if there is any changes, the full board makes changes, but coming back to committee is not doing anything. It's just filibustering the, um, the questions. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Yes, just to clear up the, the policy is, are the things in red now on my screen part part of the policy? No, sir, they are not. Uh, this okay. the initial number one was uh, one suggestion and number two was another possible suggestion to address Ms. Causey's concern and also what Ms. Um, Ms. Scott had indicated. So no, they are not. They had not been formally uh, presented as possible amendments. I was just typing them out so that if the committee wanted to discuss them, you would have them in front of you. OK, then then I would like to amend Mr. Holmes's motion to include those uh, those things that are now typed in. I accept that amendment. So a well, couple things. First of all, it was not an either or. Actually, uh, number one would have changed would have just changed um, the, the policy to include the word privileged. And then number two would have stricken the words from a void to school system and uh, inserted the language post only content that the school system and school board have already released to the public. So it was an either or to address those concerns, sir. I'm sorry for the confusion. I should have just put one up at a time. OK, so they could so the amendment could be either to add privilege or to add the number two post only content that a school system and school board have already released to the public. Oh, insert. OK. So it's either or. That is correct. So the Mr. So, Offerman, sorry, go uh, ahead. Then I would like to I'd like to restate my amendment to 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 include uh, to include number two. Only. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay. Or? I accept the amendment. Yeah. Okay. So Mr. Offerman amended Mr. Mahomes's amendment, excuse me, motion to insert the words post only content that the school system and school board have already released to the public and strike uh, void posting information that has not been verified and made public by the board or the school system. OK, um, so then can we take a vote, Ms. Clark, on the amendment on the on the motion as amended? I'm sorry, excuse me, on the amendment. Yes, Ms. Causey. 
No. Mr. Mahomza? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, the motion carries. And so now we will vote on the motion as amended. Ms. Causey? No. Mr. Mahomza? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Three in favor, thank you. Thank you. So the motion carries. So policy 8601 will be moved forward for first reader as reading, excuse me, as edited. Thank you for that, Ms. Howie. And are we okay with internet and everything? I believe so. Yes, ma'am. Okay, <laughs> we'll keep going. Um, next is policy 8221, board officers, chair and vice chair duties. Good afternoon, members of the committee. You have uh, before you policy 8221. Uh, the committee considered revisions to this policy at its February meeting. Uh, this policy was then moved forward to the full board for approval. At the March 23rd, 2021 meeting during first reader, uh, the board returned the policy to PRC, uh, asking that PRC address concerns raised by board members and the public. Um, the comments to this policy that were received by the public uh, and by board members were provided to members of the committee and in the SharePoint site um, that was done uh, last week. So uh, with that, I'll ask if there are any concerns that the committee wishes to address in the revised policy. Okay, any questions? Okay. And members of the committee, as indicated previously, we've um, enhanced, if you will, the, um, the policy analysis and included key points in those uh, sample policies from other school systems uh, that could be helpful. We've also included the full copies of those policies in the SharePoint for you. Thank you. Ms. Causey, you have a question? Ms. Colsey. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the additional um, information that was included in the policy analysis. Um, and again, we're speaking in this policy about individual board members uh, being in violation of a policy. Um, and there is some very uh, strong consequences um, about any board member who violates the standards, um, but there is no process that is, um, there's no process that is defined in this policy. So I, I think that that is necessary. And if um, staff can make that adjustment before it comes to the full board, I think that will be helpful because that is a um, comment that was made by uh, board members at the at the prior full board meeting um, where this um, policy was sent back to the PRC for additional work. Where's the, I guess I would ask then, where is your, what is your suggestion then? What needs to be included? I'm not following. So I think a process needs to be defined for the board to govern itself uh, we've, this is now the second policy that we're di discussing today that has um, significant ramifications for board members, uh, preventing them from being engaged in board work. Um, <clears throat> and there's there's no process defined. So that's an incorrect assessment. It's not uh, preventing them from being engaged in board work. I've, I've heard you say things um, like that. That that's that's not helpful to this process, and it's also undermining this process. Um, following rules and having policies that govern ourselves as board members so that we can be self-governing and giving us a guideline is not preventing board members from engaging in board work. 
So if there's a suggestion for process that you feel is missing, then it would be helpful for, for you to say what that is so that um, staff can include it. Actually, it was requested of staff to, to include it at the full board meeting where this policy was returned to PRC. And when a board member uh, may be removed from committee assignments, uh, that does prevent them from being engaged in the work of the board. And if they are censured by the board, um, that also prevents them from uh, being engaged in board work. And I would ask Ms. Howie, could you please define censure that for the member, public, that please? In that. That's, I'm, again, I'm sorry, that's Madam out of context. Speaker, that's the interpretation of this policy, Ms. Causey. Um, that's because of actions, then those are the results. It's not as if these are just haphazard things that happen. This action happened, this is the result. So, and the very first thing is the board member would be requested to cease the objectionable activity prior to any of those other um, um, things taking place. So, Ms. Howie, um, Ms. Causey said there was a staff member that suggested processes be included in here. Um, is that something that is already included and we're missing it or? No, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I said board member at the prior full board meeting address the concern of there not being a process. So I would have to look at the comments again. The comment that I do recall the uh, what was in the motion to commit was that the uh, the board sent sent this back to address concerns raised by board members, uh, but there was nothing more in the motion to commit. As to your request about the definition of censure, it's not specifically defined in the state board cases that are provided to you, but the closest corollary that I could give would be that it's like a reprimand that the board would be providing to another board member. And Ms. Causey, if you could please also, under the individual board member violations, um, as I understand it, is that not the processes there where it's A, B, C, and D? The process of the behavior would be being requested to seize the objectionable activity, removal from any committee assignment, censure by the board, and the board will review the member standing. That, as I understand it, is the process by which would be followed should a violation occur. So, Madam Chair, is that a question you would like me to answer? No, I was asking that if Ms. Clausey, um, excuse me, if Ms. Howie, I apologize. Okay, thank you. I apologize. What was the question, ma'am? Yes, um, where it was brought up as far as the processes. Mm -hmm. um, and it said that um, I looked at um, the individual board member violations um, where Ms. Clausey had stated that there was no processes. It looks like under that, under two, where it shows that any board member who violates the standards set forth, it shows the process which would happen. Request to cease the activity, removal from a committee, censure by the board, and the review the member standing. As I understand it, that would be the processes by which this would um, be implemented. Is that a correct um, assertion? So I can see it defined in a few ways. Uh, it's you never ask a lawyer a direct question, okay. uh, Scott. So it, it is, I do see that this can be considered a process. I also see that these are steps. And in order to get the, to those steps, if that is, again, that's another way of looking at it. So in, for example, if um, removal from committee assignments would uh, a possible way to look at that if you don't look at this as process is that uh, a majority of members of the board would ask the board uh, chair to remove the individual or censure by the board. It's clear that that's board activity. Uh, mm -hmm. If however, uh, if however, what you're looking for is that there is uh, there has to be a, a request and then after the request for censure, there has to be a review, uh, there has to be a panel. That is also that also could be considered um, procedural in nature. Uh, if that is what the uh, the committee is looking for, 
However, again, and this is one of the reasons why uh, the cases were provided to you where board members were censured by their boards, uh, there was not in those, in any of those cases, in any of those fact patterns, an indication that there was one specific process that was used. In one case, for example, um, in a Talbot County case that was some years back, there was a request that the board issued to its board council. Board council then issued a report. So it, it really is fact specific. But if this is something that the board wants um, more, wants spelled out in a different way, then I believe that uh, that can be done. But that that's for the board and this committee to indicate what it would prefer. If you would prefer that all actions be sent to um, a committee or that a committee be established, in order to determine whether or not censure should be recommended. I mean, th there are there are ways that you can get to the steps if that is what you're asking about. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions or comments? Okay, Ms. Clark, if we could take a roll call vote, please. On 82, policy 8221, moving forward for first reading. As presented. Yes, um, Ms. Causey. No. Mr. Mahomza. Yes. And Mr. Offerman left the meeting. So Ms. Scott. Yes. So the motion fails. You do not have a majority of members of the committee who have voted to take action. We'll go forward without recommendation. Okay. Thank you. And the next is policy 8311 and presenting is Ms. Howie. Thank you, members of the committee. Policy 8311 was presented to you uh, at several meetings. First at your meeting September 21st, then again October 19th, uh, November 16th, and finally on February 22nd. At the February 22nd, 2021 meeting, this policy was moved forward to the full board for approval. At the March 23rd meeting, during the first reader of the policy, uh, the policy was, was returned to PRC to consider legal advice from the board member, from the uh, from board council. Um, and also um, there was a request to look at uh, undue interference and I think I'm reading notes from the wrong policy. I do apologize. Um, the agenda, the changes to the agenda are included and changes in the appendix concerning how the board is to act with remote meetings is also included in the policy. Okay, are there any questions? OK, um, Ms. Um, Clark, if we could take a roll call vote, please. Uh, yes, Ms. Causey. I'm abstaining, thank you. OK, Mr. Mahosa. Yes. And Ms. Scott. Yes. Yes. Yes, two in favor. So that would also move forward without recommendation. Sorry, you went out. I'm sorry, that would also move forward without recommendation. Okay, all right. So finally, board members, in terms of your approval, you also have policy 8314, which concerns your agenda. Um, so based on comments made at the board meeting, uh, there were changes made or suggested changes made to this policy. So we've included uh, in the recommendations uh, in this most recent version that uh, there is a dissemination section. Uh, there were concerns expressed at the March 23rd, 2021 meeting about, uh, re about releasing uh, motions prior to 
uh, a board meeting releasing those motions to the board chair. Uh, so we've tried to capture what is recommended by the Open Meetings Act. Uh, so uh, suggesting a 24 hour dissemination uh, period uh, so that those uh, items that are recommended for adding to an agenda can be provided to the public as well 24 hours prior to a meeting. Um, so that is included in the most recent um, iteration of this policy. You also have in the uh, policy analysis a summary of what was done at PRC in September, October board meeting in December, PRC meeting in February, board meeting in March. Um, and with that as well, uh, there are um, uh, additional, there is additional information in the policy analysis about what other local boards of education do to provide you with that, that guidance as well. I'm available to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Any comments, any changes? Okay, it's a question from Ms. Causey. Thank you, Ms. Howie, for tracking all of that. And um, I had a question on the policy analysis on page um, two and I guess I don't understand um, the current recommendation. If you could just walk through an example of that. Okay. So the if a board member wishes to make a motion to amend the agenda, then that board member would provide the information to the board's administrative assistant at least 24 hours prior to the board meeting and that information would be disseminated via board docs or whatever uh, uh, whatever platform is used at that time uh, so that not only the board but the public would know about the possible change to the agenda. Thank you for that explanation. So if there's a scenario where um, there's, let's say there's a superintendent presentation or a staff presentation at the board meeting, um, mm -hmm. and then there's board discussion, um, and and then it um, seems that there's consensus on an action that the board would like to take uh, or to, you know, <clears throat> add something to the agenda, is that going to be precluded? Is that going to be not allowed because of this policy? No, it's allowed now. Uh, the, however, what the Open Meetings Act uh, anticipates and uh, promotes is that the public be given information when it is available. So as you're aware, Ms. Causey, there have been times when we've had to have emergency meetings on very short notice. So it's not possible to give a certain number of days notice to the public. Uh, and what the Open Meetings Act uses as a time period is 24 hours as, again, a possible time period. But if there are emergencies or urgencies, there are. To give the public notice of what's going on so that the public uh, can make its plans and know what the the board or what the public entity that public body is doing. So no, you wouldn't be precluded because you're not precluded now. OK, thank you for that. And so. Um, in in moving through and processing the addition, the changes that were made. Um, I, I just ha see this. Oh, OK, this is black and white. How can we distinguish what change was made to this draft policy after the full board meeting? Where I have to provide you an inter uh, interlineated copy, or we can certainly provide to you what was given to the board at the March meeting. 
but we haven't, we don't usually, when we're presenting uh, suggested amendments, date the, the document by the amendment. We usually simply amend the document and present it to either the board or to PRC uh, as a full document. Okay, thank you. And then um, previously, some months ago, there uh, were some um, documents that were being provided to board members uh, related to agenda items that mm -hmm. had been requested and where they were in terms of being considered to be added to the agenda. Um, <clears throat> and it was uh, discussed that there um, was going to be further information about the process um, as the board standard operating procedures were developed. Um, and I wondered, uh, are you aware where the standard operating procedures um, for the board operations are in process? Because I think um, that would be helpful to board members to understand when they've made requests for agenda items, um, you know, what the exact process is and, and where those agenda items are in the process. I'm sorry, point of order, point of order, excuse me. Um, Ms. Causey, um, I don't believe that's germane to policy 8314. That was something that was discussed by the full board, and that's something that I feel should be directed to Dr. Williams, as he's the one that directs the dissemination and, um, and, and those sorts of things. Um, my understanding is for our committee, we're reviewing policy 8314, not actions of the full board, which is what you're asking. So um, I would ask that you limit your questions specifically to this policy. And that um, is not, I look through the policy, I don't see anywhere where it's germane as far as other than that we do have suggestions for future board meetings, but the process by which that happens is something um, that should probably be sent an email to Dr. Williams. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll uh, clarify my question. So uh, prior when I was the board chair and receiving requests for agenda items, um, I requested that the um, administrative assistant uh, create a spreadsheet and uh, have components in there that then could then be distributed to uh, all of the board members so they could understand uh, where that item was being considered, whether it was considered being considered for an agenda item at a future meeting or whether it was going to be addressed in a weekly update or whether it was going to be um, addressed in a future committee meeting so that board members, um, instead of having to make motions at the meetings uh, in terms of understanding where issues that are important um, are being addressed, that that document would be a routine document. Um, and that's why it, I'm bringing it up here because I think it's helpful to have standard operating procedures. Board members are aware where issues are being addressed. So it doesn't need to right. take time at the beginning of meetings. So um, thank you. That would could you respond to Ms. Causey, please? Sure. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm afraid, Ms. Causey, that that question is above my pay grade. Uh, I do not uh, have any knowledge of uh, how uh, once the requests are made, how those are, are processed. That would be, as Ms. Scott said, a question for the superintendent. Thank you. So um, with that, Ms. Causey, you can feel free to email the superintendent and I'm sure he will be most responsive to you. Um, are there any additional questions? I believe Mr. Mahomes, I guess, is the only other board member other than myself on for policy 8314. Um, hearing none, Ms. Clark, may we take a roll call vote, please? Uh, yes, Ms. Causey. No. Mr. Mahomes, uh. Yes. Ms. Scott. Yes. Two in favor. Thank you. So it goes forward without recommendation, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. A quick study. <laughs> OK. So, um, sorry, ma'am. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So members of the committee, the remaining items are your annual review items uh, and are brought to you uh, annually, brought to you each year 
for your information uh, so that you're aware of the work that's going forward. Uh, some of these documents were specifically requested by PRC in years past. So first I have for you the, uh, the draft uh, meeting dates for PRC for 21-22. Uh, we have again uh, placed the committee meetings on Mondays, the Monday prior to the board meeting, and we, I'm sorry, after, after the board meeting, and we have not yet, not scheduled a board meeting, a PRC meeting in January or in April because of spring break, and in January because of uh, the board's many commitments regarding the budget. Superintendent's rule 8130, this is actually the only rule in the, um, in the 8000 series, does indicate that the board, uh, that the superintendent will bring to the board for um, the board's information, a list of policies that will be reviewed during the upcoming year. And there were also requests, specific requests from the board for review of certain policies. One in particular that I would point out for the for the PRC's information is 8315, participation by the public. As you're aware, uh, the board sent that policy back to PRC. Uh, and as you're aware, uh, there has been um, uh, an appeal to the State Board of Education uh, concerning the application of that policy. So that will be brought to you uh, later in the year. There is also uh, a revised um, policy editing conventions. Um, and I know Ms. Causey has heard this for several years, Ms. Ms. Scott as well. As you're aware, uh, we want to make sure that policies when they're brought to you are presented in a specific way. Uh, and these are the conventions that are used when policies are revised and when those revisions are brought to you. We've made two minor edits uh, to uh, embody what has already uh, been practiced, but we realized they weren't in the conventions, and that was to include the words reviewed and edited, uh, and to, revive, to define those in the policy editing conventions. You have as well, uh, questions and answers on hearings before the Board of Education. This um, handbook was specifically requested by PRC in years past so that the appeals process to the board and to your hearing examiners could be explained in layman's terms. Um, and we have struggled this year. It, it, uh, it seemed as if to me and looking at it with fresh eyes, that it was not um, basic enough and not direct enough for members of the public who might not be represented by council. So we've worked very hard to make sure that there is not legalese or jargon in this document. This document is posted along with policy 8339 and 8340, I'm sorry, 8340 and 8341, and as well is translated in the languages that are noted at the uh, at the front of the appeals and hearing handbook. And those are all for your information. Uh, as I said, those are brought to you annually so that you're aware of how the work of the committee is going forward. Uh, policy, I'm sorry, Superintendent's Rule 8130, the list of policies and what will be reviewed next year will be presented as information to the board at your July meeting, as well as the appeals and hearing handbook. I'm available to answer any questions. That was a, that was a mouthful. Yeah, thank you for that, um, Ms. Howie. I do have a question though. Are we to take a vote on um, the policy editing conventions or, or all of these, um, or was this just for information? It's for information, but the uh, the board has or PRC has approved it in years past. So if that's something that you wish to do uh, at this uh, PRC meeting, you certainly may. And as well, again, as you're fully aware, members of the committee are fully aware that in years past, you've added to the uh, the list of policies to be reviewed by PRC. Uh, there have been specific requests. 
So if there are additional requests of that nature, then this list can be um, amended prior to sending it to the board. And this is the policy editing conventions, or this is uh, the proposed meeting dates, the superintendent's rule 8330 and policy editing conventions. This is editing conventions as well as the superintendent's report on uh, rule 8130. 8130, okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to check. Yes, um, Ms. Qualls, do you have a question? Thank you. Um, thank you for all of that explanation, um, Ms. Howie. I did have a question around the proposed PRC meeting date, mm -hmm. um, which does, um, currently we do not have a meeting scheduled in um, July or August. Mm -hmm. and also not one in January um, or April. So mm -hmm. um, there is quite a lot of work to do in policy review as, um, and I, <clears throat> in the interest of time, am, am, well, I, I think that we should consider another meeting and I guess I would um, ask of staff, there is some time frame. Um, I believe it's in August where um, the school system tries to make a dead week where it's easier for people to go on vacation and so forth. And so, number one, would it be necessary to make a motion to add a meeting date um, at, at this meeting, or could that motion be made in a full meeting, full board meeting? Um, because I think we should add either July or August. Um, and I'm, I'm I, and I would like staff input on what would be most convenient for staff. If I could give input on that, please. Um, uh, this is Miss um, Scott. I don't believe that there needs to be um, another date added. I believe that the schedule, the way that it is, is fine, um, and there does not need to be uh, another date added. So I would absolutely disagree with that. I think that it's up to the committee again. Moving the work of committee to the full board is not the purpose of having a committee. It's up to committee members to decide when we would meet. So if it's necessary to make a motion here, to take a vote here, but I don't feel that it is. I think that the timeline is fine. Um, it's been the practice, I understand, of the policy review committee to not have meetings um, uh, over the summer, and I think that it is um, most appropriate. This idea to meet, to meet to meet to meet, I, I don't feel is is um, is productive. I actually feel that it is counterproductive. Um, Miss Howie, if you would like to um, add anything, please do. It's up to the committee as to whether or not the committee would like to add a date in July or August. Uh, that uh, obviously the board meets during both July and August, so I would leave that to the committee's pleasure. Okay. All right, any other discussion? Oh, yes, Ms. Causey has a comment. Please go ahead. Thank you. I would like to make a motion to add a policy review committee meeting to July or August as determined most convenient by the superintendent's staff. Okay. Is there a second? Okay, hearing none, that motion does not pass. Um, is there any additional discussion as the motion did not pass? Yes, I would ask Ms. Howie, is it um, appropriate to have the full board add a policy review committee meeting schedule? I think that's a committee function, uh, not a board function to schedule committee meetings. It's certainly a board function to ask the committee to consider certain issues and that is has been done uh, as is reflected by the items discussed today, but to direct the committee to have a meeting is not something I'm aware that the board has ever done. Thank you. And then I did want to ask a question about the other documents that you referenced. Superintendent's Rule 8130 policy scheduled for review in 2021-2022. You said that coming to the full board for consideration? According to the policy, it has to be presented for uh, information uh, to the board annually. 
So yes, it will be presented as an information item at the board's July meeting. And is it? It's my recollection that there have been motions made during uh, around items that are presented for information. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Um, and then policy 8341 questions and answers on appeals and hearings. Is that also coming to the full board? For information, yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. Really You're appreciate welcome. all the work. Okay, any additional discussion? Okay, hearing none, um, if there are no corrections, then uh, Ms. Clark, may we have a roll call vote on moving policy um, 8130 and editing conventions to the full board for information on the July 13th board meeting? Absolutely. Ms. Causey? Could the chair restate the motion or repeat the motion? So I don't believe that the uh, that the moving them forward for information, unless there is an amendment that mm -hmm. the, the PRC wishes to make, I don't believe that a formal motion is necessary. If there's an amendment oh. that you wish made, uh, then it will be moved forward as amended as discussed in the uh, in this meeting. For example, if you wish another policy added to uh, the policies that will be reviewed during the, the year, then yes, it would be appropriate to to move them forward. But if there's no objection, these will be placed um, on the next board meeting as information. Thank you. OK, so then these would just move forward at the next board meeting on July 13th. OK. I do All see right. a comment from Ms. Causey. Oh, there's a comment from Ms. Causey. Yes, Ms. Causey, please go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to say um, in the interest of time, our meeting is supposed to be ending and I have another obligation, uh, but I will be um, making some motions for amendments um, when these are presented to the full board. Thank you. Thank you. OK, and last um, are questions and answers on appeals and hearings 2021 to 2022. And for that, we call on Ms. Howie. And as I indicated, this is a handbook that is presented, uh, that is posted along with uh, board policies 8340 and 8341. Uh, it was a document that was created at the express direction of PRC in years past. I believe Mr. Arnold was was chair of the board at the time and asked that a document be uh, created so that uh, those persons, particularly those who weren't represented by council, would understand the appeals process. Thank you. All right, and the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. Again, I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. Are there any issues of concern from members of the committee? Okay, hearing none. Um, I understand that Ms. Howie has some additional information for us from, oh yes, Ms. Causey, comment please, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the work of staff and I um, think that with some additional sharing of their work with the full board, um, that uh, work can be done more efficiently. And so I hope that would be um, considered um, by staff in conjunction with the board officers and the superintendent. Thank you. Any other issues of concern? Okay. And uh, Ms. Hanley, you have some additional information for us concerning the board's ethics code revisions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you're aware, members of the committee, uh, you voted to uh, amend several ethics, several of your ethics code policies. Those amendments were then approved by the board. As you're further aware, you are unable, because of state regulation, state law, to unilaterally change your ethics code policies. They have to be sent to the state ethics commission 
uh, for approval. So I am pleased to report that uh, the uh, State Ethics Commission has advised and did advise as of June 10th that it approved all of the changes that were sent and ultimately approved by the board. So what will happen now is that we will then post the uh, ethics code policies as amended and as approved by the State Ethics Commission. Thank you, Ms. Howie. All right, and the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for September 20th at 4.30 p.m. Because there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, committee members, and congratulations again, Mr. Mahamza. Thank you.